well, what chemicals do I use? How can I use it? I even had, I had questions when I came in tonight about that. So I brought in a bunch of stuff. And what I think I'm doing is I'll go over this stuff and it'll open up to you guys on the floor. And uh, we'll do it that way. Is that okay? All right. So just we'll start. I brought it. Let's start with a couple of different thinners. To me, a thinner. Everyone knows X20A. Lacquer thinner. And then we have the airbrush cleaner. There's one I forgot to bring in. It's an orange cap. And that's the lacquer thinner with retarder in it. So there's really four kinds of, well, this airbrush cleaner doesn't quite fit, but you'll see four kinds of Tamiya bottles like this at the store. Um, and these, the first thing I'll say, and you guys have heard this, you can use lacquer thinners to thin acrylics. You can. Although the, the book says you can't, you can even apply lacquer thinners over acrylics. I've done that before, no problem. So um, we'll just throw out all the different kinds. And then you've got Real Colors AK, which is not real. It's a kind of like, a, is that a synthetic lacquer? Is that what that is? It, it, it's basically the same as this guy. Okay, that's a cleaner. Then you have Life Color. That's weird. That's, the, that's just the weird stuff. There's that. Then you have testers. Oh, this is the acryl thinner. This one, this one's a little bit unique because you know the Model Master acryl, the color line and the flats and the semi-glosses. I use those a lot. This is the only stuff I find that works with it. It's true. It's all uh, ammonia based. Ammonia you can tell they act like it's oh. different. Yeah. I've but tried. It's definitely you, different. You it's definitely you can't uh, thin it with alcohol. You cannot. You can't thin it with Windex either. I've tried no, it. Sure. So, so you find it in the airbrush? With yes. This they have, and there's two of these. I didn't bring all the bottles in. This one is the thinner, right. and then they have another one which is a, a cleaner to clean your airbrush. They look exactly the same. I think they're di different colored labels. Now, if you guys pay attention to these things as I do, I think test. I may be wrong, but there's a blue label and a green label. The blue one is the thinner, the green is the cleaner. And I swore I saw the store, they switched it around. So the green one's now the thinner and the other one. But anyways, this stuff is only for the acryl line of acrylics. And if you're gonna use the, the remember I had a conversation with you, if you're gonna use the Model Master flat, semi, and gloss, which are fabulous, they don't attack paints, this is the stuff. You have to thin with that, okay? Then we have other stuff. This is another airbrush cleaner which comes from an Awada, when you buy an Awada, so that's an airbrush cleaner. This one's an acrylic airbrush cleaner. This is lacquer airbrush cleaner. You loan me your Humbrol clear, so these are clear paints, we'll put those over here. Arrow, look at this vintage, this belongs in the museum. Uh, Arrow Master Warbird Colors oh airbrush thinner. Who, who uses those colors still? Hey. No, but I don't, that, that's not butyl nitrate, is it? Uh, What's it say? I don't it's know. It's the old floral enamel. Yeah. Oh, that's Air right. Master. That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, they, I believe they added a little bit of white scale effect. They, add, they added orange and they use them in Vietnam. That's what this stuff is. <laughs> <laughs> All right, then you've got uh, paint retarder, which is kind of, I just brought a whole bunch of stuff out. This is airbrush thinner for Vallejo. They're their black brand, so that belongs over there. This is the Humbrol, which is this stuff comes in two different containers, same thing. Tip, okay, I make my own washes. I use the uh, Windsor Newton, you know, the Windsor Newton oil paints, and this stuff. Mix it together, the wash is fabulous, fabulous, okay? Uh, and, but, but I find that if you're gonna use Windsor Newton oil, get the higher grade stuff, like they have like burnt sienna, raw umber, Write it down, raw umber in Windsor Newton, like a little pea size, put it in a cup, or if you got those little 35 millimeter uh, uh, film canister, uh, fill up half of with this, shake it up, fantastic wash. And that'll last you about a week. It's got a shelf life. And if you leave it sitting in the little container after a week, this starts to get sludgy. You put it on the, your, your tanks, and it's, it's really good for that. Then we have, well, this is the Model Master Thinner for their enamels, which belongs in this group. Aptalon Odorless Turpentine. That belongs here, but you can't smell it. This is something, poppy seed. Who uses poppy seed oil? Why would you use that? Poppy seed. So you can fail the drug test. <laughs> <laughs> poppy seed oil is what finger painters. They can add, you can add it to oil paints to uh, 
slow drying. Japan dryer, you can use that to help speed up, right? This is for painting figures and oil painting, right? I am, so I'm missing the orange cap for that, and what else? Oh yeah, the uh, leveling thinner. Um, I didn't bring any leveling thinner in. Uh, Robert, where's the one I gave you? So you've got it. I gave Robert some, <laughs> he's, he's filming while he's reaching in his pocket. This, this, is the, this is the great stuff. Mr. Color leveling thinner. Leveling means it's got retarder in it. This stuff, okay? This stuff's lacquer. This stuff's acrylic, okay? But I find you can add this retarder, which is acrylic. I find, I, I've done this. Because, well, don't combine, it works. So like if you're airbrushing with um, like Tamiya paints, this lacquer thinner is fantastic with Tamiya paints. It's fantastic with uh, Gunzi acrylic paints. Um, and I even throw a couple of drops of this stuff in, no problem. That's, it has an effect. So when you throw that in, like, what does it do? Is it just slows, the drying. It slows the drying. This stuff, I just bought a bottle of this. Um, I gave a bottle to Robert. Um, Eric, you use this. This yep. is the new Mr. Color UV, UV Cut, which is their uh, gloss and their flat. This is the flat. These two together, my God, eh? Yep. Great stuff. Um, and what happens is with the leveling thinner, um, it slows the drying time of paint. So what happens is, you know, if you're if you're airbrushing board aircraft, sometimes the wing root you get this dust buildup because it's drying in the air, and when it hits the surface, it's a little bit dusty. You use this stuff. Well, we talked about that magic combination of that with Tamiya paints. The Tamiya acrylics. Tamiya acrylics is a fantastic combo because they go on so much smoother, so much less dusty. Like you, you thin them way down, like sixty percent thinner to forty percent paint. Yeah. Build them up in coats. It's beautiful, really right? Nice, beautiful. beautiful. Smooth, You're using yeah. that on your spit. Yep. So it's a lacquer, and you can use it on Tamiya acrylic. I've done it. I'm doing it many times. I've got. Um, I'm doing a uh, a Cont 1007 Italian bomber right now. It's underway, and it's got that intricate um, camouflage, right? Well, I find that when you're doing fine spray count, you can't see it, but it's 48, it's got all the modeling on it. It's, you're really tight. When you're doing camouflage, you've got three factors. Air pressure, distance to surface, right? And paint consistency, well, actually four, you have thinners and stuff, right? And I find that with this stuff, well, with this and Tamiya, it gives you really tight lines. I tested Tamiya acrylics with this, Tamiya acrylics with this, Tamiya acrylics with the orange cap with retarder, and with their regular thinner when I was doing this, and the, and uh, there's one more, yeah, the one that won out was the orange cap Tamiya lacquer with retarder, with Tamiya paint, if you want tight, tight lines with very, so it does make a difference, but you can't do lacquers with acrylics, okay? Um, I miss anything. Oh, when you when you use this stuff, and you want to mix it with uh, a Tamiya ac acrylics, uh, it's it's really great on aircraft. I find with armor, it doesn't seem to matter because like, you're not. It's the finish on the aircraft is what you're looking for. So for armor modelers, you can probably just go with this stuff. But if you're an aircraft modeler, what you find is when you've mixed this stuff with a Tamiya or a Gunzi paint, you've painted your aircraft. Take this stuff right out of the bottle after you've sprayed your model and put the thinner in your airbrush, just the thinner, and spray the model with just the thinner. And what that'll do is it reinvigorates the undercoat of the model and it just basically sh softens and shrinks everything and your finish is absolutely flawless. So at the, at the final thing, you just spray a clear coat of this stuff on uh, and it's great. The only other competitor to this is the Tamiya Orange Cap lacquer thinner with retarder. That's a lot. <laughs> uh, any questions? Any tips? Harvey? For the uh, Tamiya retarder, yeah. I, if your bottle is the same as mine, it doesn't give you instructions this one? No. as to how much. No. So what do you, I mean, what I've, do you do? I've experimented with it. Um, I find that if you, let's say you get a little mixing cup. Yeah. Um, like like the free ones from Costco, you know the you know for mixing oh, paints. The the yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, a couple of drops. If you add a lot, it's not going to hurt. But if you add a lot, 
it's gonna it's gonna really slow the drying time. Right. What? So, you I just say a couple of drops to a couple of drops of like maybe like if you were measuring it, you don't you don't put half and half of this stuff in. Maybe a tenth. But Twenty. Per, per, yeah. I'm a brush paint. Okay. Uh, ah. Then you have to add more. That's a good point. If you're brush painting, add more. There's a Vallejo brand too. For the Vallejo, uh, they have their own retarder in the Vallejo. Right. And for that one, yeah, paint figures, you, you could add about 50 50. Okay, but for vehicles like ours? Uh, yeah, you could, if you're hand painting, I'd go higher. Definitely, I'd put more of the stuff in 50 50. Straight to the paint? Straight to the paint. Yep, give it a try. Okay, so now this is new concept to me. All right, so it takes longer to dry. Yeah. And? It smooths the paint out. That's right, yeah, okay. Right? Right, Eric? You Eric has to smooth it out, right? Yeah, and uh, if, you get to, if you've ever got issues with like dry tip on your airbrush, it, it, it alleviates that somewhat as well. And your brush marks? Brush marks? Yeah, brush yeah. marks. Mm -hmm. it's, it's like, the, to me, a primer. You know the spray, the fine primer out of the can? It's got, yeah, it's great. I use it all the time. It's got uh, retarder in it. So you notice if you use that spray can, you, you look at it and go, oh my God, I just wrecked the model because the coat's so heavy. Yeah, you and then, you know, you, you're, yeah. And then you go and then come back and it Training levels it changes. out. Yeah. Levels it out. It's got retarder in it. So great I'm, just, stuff. I'm just wondering for figures or whatever, like brush painting. Yeah. You would put the retarder and the thinner? No, just the retarder into the paint. Just the retarder. Yeah, the only time you use thinner is if you're airbrushing. If you're hand painting figures, I would just use the paint, whatever paint you're using, like a, to me acrylic, yeah. and this stuff and mix it together. It's okay. worked for me. Same with Vallejo. Um, you can use their Vallejo tubes for figure painting. Yeah. Uh, and then you, there's a Vallejo, that's a different term they use. They don't call it retarder, but it slows the drying time, and you, and you mix the two. And that's it does help. Like a gel. It's a gel. That's a gel. That's right. Yeah. yeah. Medium, yeah. There's a flow weight. There's a medium. That's it. Flow. Flow something. Flow weight. Yeah. Flow weight. Yeah. I got to. You knew a flow weight? Yeah. What's she? Five bucks an hour or something? Yeah. Sorry. Uh, oh, I'm being filmed. So I'm sorry. All right. So, uh, uh, what else? Anything else? Yes, you can do lacquers. Well, yes, John. Thinking of the small little tomato bottle. I just picked up a bottle of an ABS glue. Yes. Not so much for modeling, but I was moving some stuff, putting a new Blue Ranger system in, knocked an antenna down. Yes. It happened to be made out of ABS plastic. Yes. yes. Great. Fixed some stuff for my granddaughter. Great. Because normal styrene stuff won't work on right. ABS. Right. So their new ABS, and I know uh, Plastistruct used to have ABS. It was yes. a weird mixture. But even that wasn't good. So to me, it's come out now with an ABS. That, oh, they, it, it, that's a good point. I didn't bring any clues in. Yeah, but uh, yeah, they all have different kinds of glues, right? And they have a fast drying Tamiya glue now. I think they've got a lime green cap. A slower one. Yeah. It stinks like hell, yeah. Were well, you guys in the in the 70s, they had this, well, you might remember, remember because I joined when you did. I think I got it at Rigby's. It was a tube of tube glue that smelled like lemons. And, and, and it was like, like, you know how you used to, but the thing is, it, was, it still had the toxic shit in it. It just smelled like lemons. So we were just smelling it more because it smelled so good. But it just smelled uh, so much. That totally makes sense, right? Um, so we, there was, the glue. Yeah. So to me, actually, has two separate things. They, they have the, 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 the quick drying one. Yes. The extra quick drying one, that's the one that stinks like hell, and they now have the, the lemon scented one as well. Oh, so yes, that's right. Yeah. 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 They have a lemon scented right. one. Yeah. Right. Green lawn or something like that. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. when you're building yeah. when your wife's in the house. And where are you thinking up the whole house? Yeah, yeah, okay. Uh, so there's many different kinds that you can use. You can mix it up. If you are putting lacquers over acrylics, just dust it on first and then apply it. But this stuff, these are what they call synthetic lacquers. So they're different than the smell that you go to crappy tire and buy the lack of thinner, it's different. But I have thinned um, Tamiya colors with Canadian tire lack of thinner. It seems to work for me. I'm one of these guys, well let's experiment. I just don't do it on the final model. Um, and you'll find that it does, it does kind of work. Uh, but do experiment before you go. I just find this is the go-to stuff, you know, right? Yeah. Harvey, what's the mix when you're spraying? For me, it depends. On, a, on this Italian aircraft, I'm, I'm going really thin mixtures. So maybe 40% paint to 60% thinner. 
on a very tight camouflage pattern if you do an Italian or like a G50 or, or like a Luftwaffe or, or even that. Um, I, go, I go fairly thin. The best um, mixtures for the acrylics for let's say the old Gunzies uh, are actually 99% uh, rubbing alcohol if you can get that. Not the 70, get the 90. Look, if you've got some good, they'll work with Tamiya. Um, go to the pharmacy and if you can get 99%, they're all out now because of some viruses. Mm -hmm. But um, if you get a 99% uh, rubbing alcohol, those are, go very nice with Gunzi and Tamiya and acrylics. Um, and I add a, like a drop of dishwashing liquid, just kind of like allow a better flow. And that works quite nice on tight, tight finishes. Um, so there's a lot of things you can do. Any other comments? Yes, Matt. So for the X20A, um, X20A, yes. That stuff. If for anyone who's been uh, to the Mike Rinaldi uh, yes. seminars, he uses that stuff out of a, a, a dropper to fix uh, pigment, like powder pigment. Yes. To make mud. That's yes. what he uses to do that. Absolutely. A lot of guys use that. Uh, yeah. This is excellent stuff, and it doesn't bite into uh, like if you were using. Obviously, you can't use this stuff. All right, but this stuff is excellent to fix. Pig. If you use the fixer by MIG, that's okay too. But I find it leaves a little glossy sheen. This does more expensive. And it's more expensive. This this does not, right? Uh, so what else was there? Uh, oh yeah. Um, when would you use a non like everyone's going with this slow drying paint? Uh, but there are times when you don't want slow drying paint. Um, Thanks to Vince, you gave me these uh, the cutter for these numbers, numerals on the side of an aircraft. You, you did it out of silhouette printer, um, and what, it's a mask for numbers. You can start to see. Now, I I didn't want that to dry f uh, slow, because if you're using masking, I want the paint to dry quick, because I don't want the paint to go. Out. You know what I mean? So think about what you want to do with your your model. You don't always have to use this stuff. Sometimes you do want to use just straight back black with uh, Mr. Color, they have their normal thinner. Yes. And they have the leveling thinner on one side. They also yes. have Mr. Rapid thinner. Yes, yes. They have an extra, extra thinner. Yes, that's even faster. They do. Um, so just, if you want to keep it simple and you're just starting, I mean, I find this stuff is fine because this stuff, this stuff, and the, especially the orange cap with retarder, it really stinks. You need, you definitely need a spray booth, right? Just out of curiosity, for life colors, uh, you have the kits. I mean, the, the, the box is going to have you know, the different yeah. colors. Is there any place you can buy individual um, paints, bottles? Good question. If somebody's watching on the web, I don't know. I can't, I can't find them in Toronto, that's for sure. Really? Life the only one that used to have it is North Star Harvey, but obviously they're yeah. around. But um, I don't know if it's again because of the labeling laws. No, no, Wheels and Wings <laughs> had a few. There's difficulties with the distribution of the uh, stuff. Okay, because those, those plants I like. Yeah. yeah. You like the life color. Yeah. Yeah. They're so different. Yeah. Um, there's, I, I've tried all sort of different blends of mi mixing and, and generally stay within the confines of lacquer on one side and acrylics on the other, you're safe. But you can kind of cross that boundary. Yeah, first Matt and then Vince. Yeah. Yeah, speaking of mixing, you had that clear that you got the, the, from uh, Mr. Color? Yes. Yeah, so the, 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 that whole thing is now, you're, well, they turned it into a system ages ago. But the idea that, that if you are ever using clears, what's really cool with this stuff is uh, Mr. Uh, Color also has what they call pigments, but it's actually a liquid pigment. Sometimes Thank you. tune or it's supposed to be tone pigment, but you can dra add drops. There's basically magenta, cyan, and yellow, and you can mix your own color of clear that way. So that's like for car modelers? For or example? whatever. Or yeah, sci-fi. Robots. Yeah. Robots. Yeah. Lights. Yeah. Lights. Yeah. Lights. Yeah. That's a, thank you. Yeah. And wave also, yeah. Wave and uh, wave also creates uh, pearl powders. Yeah. Uh, so you can actually, like, if you want to do metallic pearl, whatever, you can dump it into that. There's actually a place in the states that sells. Uh, it's a it's a car painting place, and they yeah. sell 10 gram um, uh, test packets. 
Oh. Which will last you for a lifetime because there's just it's it's you'll never use that much powder. But really? They, what they call ghost pearl, and that's the yeah. finest ground pearls, and you can dump them into that. I wonder what so, happened. I wonder what happens when we put cocaine in this stuff. Does it like it just makes that model just last and last? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, sorry, Vince. It never shuts up. So when you, um, I don't know if people realize this, but a lot of the double action airplanes, especially the Japanese ones, I took a I took some courses and did this experimentation. The needle guard, if you remove the needle guard and just expose the needle, yeah. Those will be the finest lines you'll ever yes. be able to draw. Yeah, yeah well, who was I talking to? Right, Stuart. Yeah. 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 So, so the only danger is sitting there, of course, is if you're too close and you bump, you might bend your needle. If you look at the harder and steeper, the new one, it has more like a fork. Yeah. Like a, the idea there is that everything's exposed except for these two tines that are, will protect you as a guard, right? Yeah. So experiment with that. Maybe one of the less expensive airbrushes you own or whatever. Take the take the guard take the off. Guard off, yeah. And just move in really close, and you'll be able to do you, lines that yeah. you didn't think you were capable. You, of. You'll notice that on Aztec, uh, those the, the you know the heads for the Aztec. Some of them have the, like the ridge. Some of them are completely flat. Like there's nothing, which is the exposed needle principle, yeah. right? So, and maybe we should do a session on airbrushes because yeah, that's a whole new that's a whole new topic. Um, just on that note, I'll end it here. But I just got one of those Mac valves. I love it. So the yeah, Mac yeah. the Mac valve on the hose, it's just another way to control your air pressure. That's fabulous because I couldn't do it. I couldn't do that. That con um, camouflage scheme took me two weeks. And you're playing with air pressure all the time. So if you ever have a chance, go down and get a. Some of the brushes have what a back valve. That the, uh, yeah. that, that's the little. It's a little black valve that if it, it either comes with the airbrush built in. It's called a Mac valve. It's another way to control your air pressure. Okay. It's it, and you can buy it separately and put it on. It's on a water thing, and you can put it on the uh, hose as well. I just think it's great. And, and when you're working with all these different chemicals, right? Like I said before. If you want to control good camouflage painting, you want a good paint mixture, uh, you want to think about how close your airbrush is to the surface, you want to think about your air pressure, right? All these things matter. Um, yeah, it's a hobby, but if, if you're into competing and you want a nice camo finish, you've got to think about all these things. That, that's a fabulous, uh, uh, Roy, that's a fabulous camouflage that you did on that. Yes, Maybe sir. one last thing about uh, cleaners. Yeah. Well, since Sandy's not here, yes. he's the one that taught me uh, methyl hydrate, yes. uh, which works. It's super cheap. It's going to use Canadian Tire. Canadian it works perfectly. You just wear gloves. Uh, but also, Mr. Uh, Collar, or, or Mr. Hobby, has the uh, tool cleaner. Yes. And that yes. stuff is similarly, I don't know what it is. It stinks like hell, but it, it just basically dissolves everything. This one, too. This, this airbrush cleaner, but oh my god, this, this stuff smells. So. Don't, like you wear a mask, right? Yeah, so just, uh, do you, I uh, just question, do you guys, do you guys wear a mask when you spray to me acrylics? Yeah. Hands up. Sure, yeah. Who doesn't? Oh, In the garage. Okay. okay. Yeah, I just like what is probably 20% paint. <laughs> I keep stabbing myself with an airbrush, first of all. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I, I don't wear a mask if it's like quick, but generally I, I, I wear a mask. But what if you're mixing it with level, like, like Mr. Gold? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Slacker, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, you, ever, you also know what really stinks is the, uh, we didn't talk about those, but it's it's those MIG filters. Mm -hmm. The enamels, oh, yeah. and do yeah. those stink, yeah. right? So always open your window and wear a mask. Anything else, yeah. guys? Do you like these type of conversations? Yes, yes, yes. yes. So why don't, why don't I mean, we do one on airbrushes? Huh? Photos and notes. What? Photos and notes. Well, it's being filmed, I guess. Go so watch it anytime you want. Watch it anytime you want. Photo etched. Photo etched. Okay, so so what do you guys want? Photo etch, air. Which one would you rather see? Photo etch or airbrushes? Yes. Oh, yes. You're the expert. That was, that was a bad question. That was a bad question. Bondic. Go get yourself some Bondic from Canadian Tire. Yeah. I use it all the time. It's that, you know what, it, the dentist was working on my teeth once. You know that, you know they put that, the mask on and they use the UV thing. Yeah. He's hardening the, yeah, yeah. the teeth. So then the, then I saw one at Canadian Tire, it's called Bondic, B-O-N-D-I-C. And uh, I thought, hmm, let's see if this shit will work, right? And so um, 
it, it's cool because it's a liquid. You apply the liquid to your photo etch. You, you have to hold it together with a, like a, what do you call those head things or whatever? Yeah, third, third arm, third hand. Thank you. It's only a couple the jig. Though, isn't it? It's only, yeah, once you hit it with the light, it's good. It's not as strong as solder, but maybe we can talk a bit about that. Um, but, but I love the stuff. Um, do you so prep the, how much do you prep the material you're bonding for? Nothing. You just you just take that bonding and you apply it with a brush you use it and you hit it with a UV light. Plastic. It's not strong, so you can only use it for delicate things like ships, Dave. Okay. Is really good so on it's that. A, it's a blue? No, it's uh UV? it's it's a UV light with liquid in it to bond things. Yeah. You glue things with it. Correction, that thing is very strong. Well, uh, strong. photo etch is weak. Yeah, but yes, it's, it's pretty, pretty strong, strong stuff. It's but but it's, I find it better than solder because the liquid is, is so f yeah. finessed, yeah. right? It's really finessed. So if you're doing like a, a box, like a, a box for your tiger, right? It's all photo etch. Like you know how solder can be really messy. You just brush it in and you hit it with the light. I use CA glue to do it. The what? CA glue. CA glue, yeah, yeah. Where for sure, for sure. Uh, Canadian tire. What, no, what type okay. of light? Like a flashlight? It no, comes with UV, the light. UV. It, it, it actually... Like a you press like a blue, and the UV light comes out the end. Like a blue light. It, yeah, it's basically, it basically you get the stick. You get the stick with the liquid in it, and it comes... It's a pen. And one end of the pen, and the tube is the liquid, and the other pen is the little purple light. How much do you use? Or how do you apply it? With a, with a, with a small triple zero pointed brush or whatever, depending on... And you buy extra liquid. Huh? Have you had to re put new liquid to it? You you can buy refills, but oddly enough, they're hard to get, so you got to buy them with a pen. What do you get for an RP? How much? Yeah. Get a, if you get it on sale, um, twelve bucks. Oh, yeah. two. Yeah. The two will last you. Amazon has it. Huh? Amazon has it for like twelve dollars. Oh, is that right? I, I usually wait for a sale and I, I grab them all. And, uh, do you know, the fight it with glue, sir. I think that's where you It's in the. Uh, it's not in the glue section, no. Uh, it's where the uh, welding and soldering stuff. Oh, fuck, yeah. Okay. Okay? <laughs> All right. Anything else? Okay, next we'll do another one on airbrushes and photo watch. Any, any other topics? I think that's about it. All right. Oh, sure. So we'll call it a day. I hope you enjoyed it. And, uh,